Welcome to another TIA Thursday. Last time we talked about uh, the software units. A very nice um, little, it's not a plugin, it's already installed, uh, but I call it plugin right now, or a feature, a little feature implemented in TIA Portal if you're using devices over the firmware version, I think 2.8 it was. I have to look that up. Above um, firmware version. 2.8, I think it was, 2.6, above 2.6. So if you have an S7-1500 above version 2.6 with the firmware, you can use software units. And that's what I have been doing in the last video. There were still some open things there and there have already been some questions on the, on the video. Thank you for that. Thank you for leaving the comments. I just get to the most important one. <clears throat> Uh, because I probably I answered them already on the comments in the video. Um, the one thing that I think is still a little bit confusing, those two software units, now they are not independent programs. The whole PLC still runs one program and it runs it in that way. It executes the main OB1 first because it is OB1. And the other two, the process and the supply, I have given each one of them a, another main. And this one here in my process has main, o, uh, main OB123, which is a higher number than OB1, so it runs after that one. So we have OB1, and then we have um, the process, and after that we have the supply, which is OB124. So that's what we have. So they are not running in parallel or so, they are really running in a sequence. With the big difference than just without using pros, uh, without using software units, you would usually have this huge chunk of program and then you could have more OBs in there. But in our case, those OBs, they are um, independent from each other. They're running after each other, but from the data on and from the programming on and from downloading and reading and observing and monitoring them, they are completely separate. And that's the advantage. So they are, you can basically take this, put it on one PC, take the other part, put it on another PC, monitor it, program it. That's the advantage. When you download on the PLC, you can download this part and you can still work on that part. Later on, you can also download that part. Uh, but before you download that, the program is running with this part and then without this. And later on, you can download this. You can still change this afterwards. So it's giving you way more flexibility. That's the advantage here. So it's not separate programs. It's really just making it more comfortable to work with it. <clears throat> yeah. With some restrictions, and I'm going to talk about the restrictions now. Um, there's some more, but I talk about the more important ones. Um, yeah. The first important one that I have is the following. If I have a new block so I'm now inside my process, which is one software unit. When I'm in this block, it doesn't matter which one I select here. It doesn't matter what I select here. Um, let's make a function. Uh, let's make a data block, for example. Let's make a new data block. I create it. And if I right click and I look into the properties in the attributes, the optimized block access, the optimized block access is on for all of them. If you have an optimized block act, uh, access active. That means you cannot anymore work with addresses. Everything just works with the tags and name based, right? So it's automatically on. It's also on for all the other blocks that you create outside a software unit, but there you can turn it off. So you can work address based. In here with the blocks, you cannot work address based anymore. It is. Um, Symbol based, tag based has to be. It can't be otherwise. If we would have it otherwise, uh, it's not possible. Like this, this cannot work independently but from this because if we're working with addresses, they would make conflicts. If we, if we create a new tag or so, addresses are shifted and then they are inside each other. That won't work. If we're using tags, totally flexible. So our blocks are all optimized, which is basically an advantage, but some things outside of the PLC here, they do not work with optimized access. So we need to be aware of that. <clears throat> That's the first. <clears throat> Sorry. 
my voice. <clears throat> that, by the way, that stands for uh, organization blocks, data blocks for all functions. You see it here with the main as well. It has an optimized block access for an OB, by the way, it's the um, feedback data. It's a diagnostics data in it that is optimized. Maybe you've been wondering why does it have optimized uh, block access? It doesn't have data. It's just a function. No, it has. It has diagnostic data. So first thing. Second thing, second thing is the following, the PLC tags. So I have a tag table for my um, software unit process. I have one PLC tag table for my software unit supply. Let's create a variable in my process. So let's, let's just make one that is called um, test in process. That's just the name, doesn't matter. It has a data type and it has an input address, right? It has an input address, so it is actually here, input 0.0, .0. I can zoom in. And it's actually on my hardware here, there it is. Easy, right? that's easy, that's, 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 that's great, that's fine. While I am in my software unit process, so let's go into the main, I create an input, and here in my main, I can actually take that tag, and here we go, fine, right? That's perfectly fine. Now, here's the thing, if I go into my, um, supply software unit and I try to now take this tag that I had right the same way the, just the same way I can't see it in the drop down and if I just type in i 0.0 I can't right I cannot access that test and process because it is inside of another software unit each software unit as I said independent so we can't do that right here if I want to access inputs outputs, the second software units, unit has the has its own. So the second software unit, right? This is the first. This was the first software unit, and the second software unit, I can still use the same I/O module here. That's why I'm showing it. So input 0.1 is still open. The second software unit, my supply here, uh, I would call it supply tag. Input 0.1. That's fine. And I can use this 0.1 in my supply uh, software unit. As you see, they are working independently. If I try to use that tag in my, um, in my process, you can see it's not listed here. And if I try to access it, I um, 0.1, I cannot do that because it is inside another software unit, right? So that's... Uh, limitation we have the tags we define in one software unit are independent from the other one i can also not override it also i can also not say i00 because that already belongs to the other software unit that might get into conflicts and i can use it but that will get us into some conflicts so let's not do it you can see it is orange so it's fine to use but ooh. Not, to, not the best. It's ambiguous. You're using the same address twice. Pretty bad. So not do that. So that's the second limitation we have. You can only use the variables that you created in one in that one software unit because it is like two independent machine parts, right? You won't need that anyway, usually. Next. Next limitation we have. How much time do I have? Still some minutes. Um... So next limitation that we have is the following. Um, if I have here, let's see, a new block. This is now global data, right? Global data, I will create a global data block outside of those software units. A global data block and I will just global thingy. Right? I put a global thingy inside this global data block. I am now in my um, process software unit. And let's see, I will just put the tag and let's try drag and drop, right? I have this global thingy and I will put it here. And it says, no, you can't also use that. Again, this software unit that we have is also independent from the big unit that we have the global program. So this is limited, right? This is another limitation. You see, we have a lot of limitations. That's not good. This limitation that we have right here, right, this one, we can break. We can break 
using so-called relations. I can say in that little software unit that we have here, please use some of the data from the global data block or some of the data from actually another software unit. I can say that, but this is only limited. If I want to use the data inside this block here, I can only read it. Um, I cannot read it then back in the other block. You will see what I mean in a second. That was a bad explanation. You will see in a second. So this global data here, it's red. What I need to do is create a relation, like, like a handshaking, handshake between those. Um, and let's see. We can see those two. I have to create a relation. This relation is right now for the process. It's not for the supply software. It's only for the process. I can define a new um, relation. This relation should be to a global data block, right? And it should be to global data block, global data block. That's how I called it. And now I can use the data from the global data block. And I can import it. So to say, I can import the data here, right? That's one way of doing it. Um, so I can actually access the global data using data blocks. Again, those data blocks, they have to be optimized. If I deactivate this optimization, you see it's not possible anymore. So they need to be optimized. Of course, and they should be, <laughs> they should be optimized. So I can access the global data. I turn it on for the process, for the supply. Let's see. I can, whoops, this is the relation in the process. I can now not yet use it, right? You see this, I try to take it, doesn't work because the global data block only has a relation to the process, not to our supply software unit. So if I want to also use it in our supply, you know how that works. Go into relations, new relation to a data block and global data block. And now it's fine. Right? So we can't break that limitation for global data blocks, but they need to be optimized. In the relations, next, next thing, there's so many things. Next thing, in the relations, you might also have seen software unit, right? We can have software unit relations. Let's see what that means. <clears throat> if I have a, well, let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. If I have a function like those software units, you can ease, you can put a normal program. Let's say uh, I put a new function in here and call it process function thing. Right? Process function thing. I can easily put it in the process. No problem at all. If I want to put it in the supply, it's going to say, hey, you can't do that. We will need a Relation. You can see if I hover on top, it says X is not possible because you have not set up a relation supply to process. Right? So if I want to um, use this process function in supply, I will have to create a relation in supply. In supply, I have to create a relation to the other software unit to process. Now I am basically importing the data, right? I am importing the data from there. So, but you see, still red. <gasps> ah, next thing. Access is, so the one thing we covered, right? We have the relation now. The next thing, access is not possible because process function thing is not published. These functions, if you create a new one, maybe you have seen it. If you create a function inside a software unit, there is this attribute called published. If it is deactivated, you cannot access anything inside the software unit from outside. Not possible. If I say published, you can access it. It's like opening a little door. You can access the function, but you still need the relation, right? So we have made the relation. That means I can get in there, but it, the bubble around the function is not open. So I can right click on the function or I can create a new one, but I want to change this one. Right click on properties, general, and there we have this published attribute. If I change it to published, you see it gets active in the other software unit, meaning I can access it there. That's, that's great, right? So I will just leave it published. Right? So if I create a new, in process, process 
2, uh, or 21, or what did I say? Yeah, process 21. Right? This process 21, I can take, I can put in process. No problem at all. In supply. Problem. It is not published yet, right? We still we have the relation already, but the function itself is not published, right? If you know it from other programming languages, there's there's public, there's published, there's global, there's stuff like this, similar, very similar. So now I can use my functions that are published from my process in my supply. Let's see the other way around. I can add a new block. I add a function. I add a function called a supply thing here we go the supply thing i want to use in my process so let's put the supply thing in my process oh that done doesn't work of course what did i forget i forgot to uh, make this published so let's see i publish it hmm. but still that's a problem access is not possible because you have not set a relation from process to supply ah of course supply is reading the functions from process using the relation we have in it so process cannot automatically read the stuff from supply because we have not set the relation inside process right in process we would also need to make a relation to another software unit let's see i cannot select anything i'm clicking i'm clicking i can even type it in supply that's not possible i cannot put that in right let's see if i hover on top this relation is a part of a circular relation. If you have two software units and you make a relation from this one to this one here, this one can read what's in here, but you can't make a circle around. You can't circle around, so you can't basically put this data that's here back up here, right? You can't make a circle so they communicate with each other. They are blocked for this. You can't do it. That would be internally really a huge problem when processing the whole program. So you can only make this one here accessible in this one or this one accessible in this one. You cannot basically merge them, right? You cannot do that. That's impossible. And that's not the idea of, um, of software units, right? They are more really working independent of each other, and that's why we have them. So, yeah, the rest, I think, so there's still some more things, but the most important stuff is covered in those two sessions with software units. In my opinion, they are a really nice thing, difficult to use, difficult to get used to. But if you're working in a team of two, or if you work in a project, on a PLC in a machine where you have different parts and you can only and you only want to influence one part at a time, not the whole machine. You want them individual parts. Those things are really awesome. And those things are really awesome. They are really, really helpful. Uh, huge, huge thing. If, if you ask me in the future, this will be way bigger, actually. Um, we'll see. <clears throat> I like them. And yeah, that's the general introduction. There's there's a lot about those, right? But the most important uh, stuff covered. I hope this helps you a little bit in the future. It definitely prepares you for what's to come. Um, if you've got questions, if you like this video, leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you the next time around. Um, have a nice evening or day or morning or night. Bye-bye. <laughs>